Hey, hello everyone. This is Victor Momo from Excel Moments. And in this video, I want to show you how to use, maybe not necessarily a formula, maybe a combination of you know, an excellent macro, some very old, you know, Excel macro functions with formulas to extract, you know, the list of all the sheets in your workbook. Okay, so let's get into it. So this is something, you know, you always wish you could do very easily where I could just you know, call up a function that would give me all the word names of um, sheets in my workbook from summary to June. Because this is very easy, you know, if you use VBA. Well, how do you do it without using VBA? This is um, something that has existed for a long time. You probably see it a lot on the forums, you know, but it'll be good to do a video just to explain, you know, how it works. So it's an excellent macro function called, you know, get.workbook. Okay. So what that does is it just gives you different properties of the workbook. I've been, you know, studying and tinkering with it. So um, you have the type norm and you have the name text. Those are the two arguments of the function. Okay. So get that workbook type norm. These are numbers. So the number we typically are interested in is one. Type norm one. Type norm one gives you a list of you know all the sheets in the workbook. If you use four. Type number four, it tells you the number of sheets in the workbook. So if I use type number four here, it's going to give me uh, seven for my worksheets. While if I use one, it's going to give me, um, you know, the names of all the sheets. Okay, so one is the names. The other one is the count. The name text is the name of the workbook. If you omit it, it's going to perform those functions and give you the properties of the current workbook. But if you then want to get the properties of another workbook, you just put it in this name text portion in double quotes, in, you know, as a string, and it will do that. Okay, but the interesting thing about get workbook is that it doesn't work as a regular function, so you can't do get dot workbook. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to create, you know, a named range, right, using the get dot workbook function, and once you do that, you can then use it in your formula. So how do we get to the name? manager we can press ctrl f3 all right or if you don't like that you can go to formulas and you can go to what name manager you can go to new or you can do define name anyone that works for you so let's do new we are just going to give it a name and maybe just call it sheet list right and we are going to use that function and that function works just here strangely some old function from like excel for all right so get dot workbook. All we need is to put the type norm. The type norm. If we want to get the sheet list, we use one. Okay, because we are doing this in the workbook where we are wanting to list the sheets in this workbook. Then you know I'm just going to use nothing for the uh, name text. I'm going to leave that blank. So once I do okay. I have this. I'm just going to go close. So I will go to my sheets. Things have changed since, you know, the advent of, you know, uh, dynamic arrays, simplicity in protection, you know, Office 365. So this really makes things quite easy. Previously, I would have to do it with the index function, but now I don't need to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull equals to what? Sheet list. Okay. That's the name range I just created. So do equals to sheet list and do enter. You see what happens. It's going to create a horizontal array for you. Okay. And this horizontal array is actually a list of all the worksheets, but with the workbook name, you know, as a prefix. If you um, expand these columns, you will see what I'm talking about. But in order to probably see it well, you could just transpose it. So let's do transpose and then do sheet list. So what this is going to do is that rather than bringing it as a horizontal array, it's going to bring it as a vertical array. Okay, so you can really see what's going on. So this is exactly what you had in here. Huh? So if you look at this clearly, you can see summary, Jan, Feb, March, April, May, June. Those are the names of my sheets. The only thing is that it has the workbook name, you know, um, appended. So what I can do is to fix this, is to go back into the name manager and then, you know, extract just what I need. Now we, most of us will be able to do this. You know, if I want to get this, what I need to do in these cases, I just need to replace everything from the beginning all the way to these um, square brackets, the closing square brackets. If I replace that with nothing, 
I'll be left with summary. Let me show you an example. So I do replace here. Where do I want to start from? I want to start from character one because I want to replace everything from character one up to where. So what's the number of characters? So how do I get number of characters? I need to find the position of this bracket, this square bracket. If I can find that position and say replace everything from the beginning to that point, I'll be left with summary. So I can use search or find. Either one works in this case because I'm not searching for, you know, uppercase or lowercase, just a character. Well, let me just use search. So I say search, find text. What am I looking for? This is what I'm looking for, right? Oh, I didn't get that. Yes. Within what? This text. Huh? So it's going to tell you the position where it's found. If you do F9 here, 22. So it means it's character 22. So what we are just saying is that starting from, you know, character 1 all the way to and pick 22 characters, you know, replace them with what? New text. Replace them with nothing. Huh? So it means that everything from character 1 to character 22 will be replaced with nothing. I left with summary. Do the same here. Okay. So I'm going to implement this in, uh, you know, my uh, name manager so that I don't have to have another helper column to create this tweak. So I'm just going to do it in the name manager. Just note, you know, um, the idea behind it. So let's go back. Control F3. Then I do edit. So here it gets a little tricky, but if you remember everything, you should be fine. So put a replace, put a bracket, get workbook name is, you know, where you know, that string will be extracted. You start from character one. Then you can do what? Your search. You search for, I'm just repeating exactly what I did over there. <laughs> search for this within the same get dot workbook one. You need to close that search bracket. Someone is like, are you able to follow this? Oh, well. Then double quotes and close. Let's do this. Okay, so that should be everything. Yeah. So exactly the same formula I just implemented on the worksheet. Uh, so do okay. Okay, so that's it. This is it here. Replace, get dot workbook one, right? Okay. Put something in there. Oh no. Start from one, yeah. Then search. Okay, yeah. I'm not wearing my glasses, so <laughs> but I think that's fine. Okay, good. Yeah. So now that gives us, you know, the names of all the worksheets in this workbook. Excellent. So this seems like you know we've solved the problem. So depending on if you add more sheets. You expect it to reflect here, but it doesn't. Why? Because the formula does not recalculate, right? So what we need to do is to actually make the function or the formula volatile, such that with everything you do, like adding a worksheet, deleting a worksheet, it does, you know, recalculate. So what happens here is that if I add a new worksheet now, I call this oh, maybe July or something. If I come here, doesn't show up. If I delete it, Hmm? still doesn't show up in here. So I will have to make that expression volatile. How can I make it volatile? You just need to add something in there, you know, that um, recalculates every time Excel, you know, calculates. So you, you think of functions like what now? You think of functions like to be, but you have to be creative in using it. The typical construct you see online is using the T function and using now. I hope I got this right in terms of capturing all the functions that are being used. Okay, so how do we use the T and now? What does the T function do first of all? That's the first thing. So it says it checks whether a value is text and it returns what a text, if it is, or it returns what double quotes, empty text, if it is not. So you know that now definitely is not text because now gives you a number because now gives you the current date and time, which is obviously a number. So it means that if you do the T function of now, right, now being a number, instead of giving you zero, it's going to give you nothing. Okay, if you did T of what a text, right, 
gives you red. But if you do T of what now, it gives you nothing. So what we can just do is that we will just concatenate, meaning we'll just add this T of now to the expression we have over there. The reason we are doing that is just to make it what volatile so that it can recalculate every time Excel recalculates. So when I insert a sheet, it forces a recalculation of that function. When the function then checks for the sheet list, it will see the new sheet. But with the way it is set up now, it is kind of hard coded. It doesn't know when I add new sheets or take out new sheets. I'm just going to take this expression since I know it's going to return a blank. So it's more like I'm not changing anything per se, right? So I go back, control F3, and here I just concatenate it. I just add this to what? This. This is like saying add blank nothing to this. So the expression is still the same. The only thing they now is doing is triggering that calculation every time, right? So I do close. Says yes, so that's fine. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a sheet right here. I'm going to insert a sheet and I'm going to call it July. Then we'll go back to the first sheet. You see that we have July in here. Let me go delete July and June, delete both, I'll come back. See, it adjusts. Okay. Because this could be a table that is set up, you know, where you're picking data, maybe using the indirect function on each of these, you know, sheet names. So you want it to always have the updated, um, you know, sheet list. So the expression really is not cumbersome in itself. It's really just get dot workbook, you know, and using one as the argument for type norm, which just gives you a sheet list, right? Okay, I was telling you that if you use the four instead, you are going to get the number of sheets in the workbook. So let me just create a name range for that, just so that you see what I mean. So just say sheet count. Okay, so sheet count, then just do here, get dot workbook, and do four, and do okay. So let's do close. So let's, in this cell, let's do sheet count. Tells me six, all right? These are six sheets. Let's add two more sheets. Huh? June, drag and hold, and then July, and then come to summary. So you see, this adjusts and this goes to eight. So we're just taking advantage of some old functions, you know, which used to exist in Excel, like the XLM, not XML, XLM, you know, macro functions. The only thing I added in here is just the T and now, just to make it, you know, volatile and make it always recalculate because now changes every time, you know, there's a change in the workbook. And once it changes, that function also changes and it means the list gets updated. So we just took advantage of, you know, the get.workbook, but the get.workbook will give you the workbook name and the sheet name. So we have to find a way to eliminate the workbook um, portion of it. Some people may not have used the replace function. They could use the mid function. So you could use the mid function and that would still work. What I mean, however you choose to approach it, that's fine. The most important thing is get rid of, you know, the workbook name and be left with just what the sheet name. This can then feed, you know, the indirect function and you can then spool data maybe directly from what those worksheets. So just something I thought to share, a non-VBA approach to finding uh, you know, all the worksheets in a workbook. Not one of the very mm, easy ones, but, you know, you probably need to watch the video maybe more than once and you'll be fine. Trust me, you will be. <laughs> so, of course, you would have the workbook um, in the links um, on, on the uh, YouTube video. So you'll be able to access it and see for yourself. Okay, so this is where I'm going to stop this video. If you like this video, you can hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, Excel Moments. Uh, till next time, just keep safe. And do take care of yourselves. As I always say, if you can think it, Excel can do it. I'm out.